Assalamu alaikum. For those who know me, I'm Iman Saif. And for those who don't, I'm still Iman Saif. And the topic I'll be discussing about is Thai, also known as Hudulam. So what is Thai? But wait, we need to learn about the basic anatomy first. Both of our eyes contain eyelashes arranged in 2 to 3 rows anteriorly along the lid margin. There are 100 to 150 in the upper eyelid and 50 to 75 in the lower lid. There are three types of glands, the gland of Zeiss that is the oil producing gland present anteriorly along the lash follicle, gland of mole that is the sweat producing gland and mybumian gland that produce the oily component of the tear film. They are arranged vertically along the tarsal plates. Tarsal plates are deep connective tissues that provide structural support to the eyelid. So what really happens is that staphylococcal bacteria that is notorious for causing a sty, they live harmlessly on our eyelids. But sometimes dead skin cells along with these bacteria get trapped within these glands leading to inflammation and give rise to a sty. A sty is a red tender nodule that is formed either on the upper eyelid or on the lower eyelid but mostly on the upper eyelid. Now you guys must be wondering why there is also a reason for that is because the number of sebaceous glands in the upper eyelid is more as compared to the lower eyelid. Let's take my boomian gland. The number of my boomian glands in the upper eyelid are 25 to 45 while that in the lower eyelid are 20 to 30. That explains the reason, right? Now, there are two types of styes depending upon the type of glands that are being infected, external sty and internal sty. External sty occurs when the gland of zeiss or mole are being infected. These are short-lived and self-limiting. However, if my boomian gland is infected, it leads to the formation of an internal sty that is present beneath the eyelid. It is usually harder to get rid of and it is much more painful as compared to an external sty. Now, coming towards the signs and symptoms. A sty is a red nodule. There is tenderness, pain, swelling, tearing, lump that leads to drooping of eyelid. And if the sty is large enough, it may be a cause of astigmatism, discomfort, foreign body sensation, mucus discharge, itching, burning sensation, crusting of the eyelid margins, and mating of eyelashes in the morning due to the mucus discharge. There is difficulty during blinking and photophobia. As I have already told you before that staphylococcal bacteria is mostly involved in the formation of a sty. But there are other risk factors as well, such as touching mucus from the nose and touching back your eyelid may lead to the spread of the bacteria not getting enough sleep, eating a lot of junk food, overuse of cosmetics, sharing of cosmetics, and the use of expired cosmetics, all these factors promote to the formation of a sty. Now, if you have already got a sty, what do you really need to do in order to get rid of it? You do not need to worry about it because most sty usually resolve on its own within a week. Warm compresses are prescribed 10 to 15 minutes, 3 to 4 times daily over the course of several days. This is done in order to bring a sty to a head so that it drains. Oral antibiotics are prescribed to relieve pain. Wash your eyelids with mild baby shampoo to promote lid hygiene. Topical antibiotic ointment such as erythromycin is applied in order to seize the bacterial growth. If a sty has already come to a head, what you really need to do is Plug an eyelash in order to promote drainage. In severe cases, when the sty is resistant to go, incision and drainage is recommended. You have probably heard of the saying that prevention is better than cure. So what steps to take to avoid a sty? Lid hygiene is very crucial. Avoid rubbing your eyes, do not share cosmetic and remove makeup every night before you go to sleep. Treat associated blephritis and dandruff of the scalp if present. In case of blephritis, wash your eyes with mild baby shampoo. Stay hydrated and eat a lot of fruit because an apple a day keeps the sty away. So a lot of time a sty is mistaken for ecclesian and vice versa because of their similar appearances. But there are some differences between them. A sty is a, is a tender nodule that results due to an infection. It is painful. On the other hand, ecclesian is a hard nodule that results due to a sterile inflammation due to a blocked mybumian gland. It is painless. So that sums up my topic. Thank you for listening and Allah Hafiz.